Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to be publishing our blog to the internet, that's right, and usually this task is not so fun until it actually pops up in your browser, so before that we're going to do something fun, let's go into our home controller and let's convert this into expressions instead of statements, right? So let's take this. And let's copy it, and we'll comment one out, just for reference. And here, we will take this, we'll put this in set of posts. So this statement, we can just like delete it, and we can delete the return and the open brackets. Now, this works, and it's a one-liner. I think, or you can, you know, you can spread it out like this, but this is what C sharp functional code will look like. And if you want to learn it, you should be getting used to it. So let's do the same for this. Comment this out. Take the post right here. Delete the rest. Now uh, this as well. Do 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 do. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Let's indent this a little bit. Let's leave that there. All right. Make this look a little bit prettier. There. There we go. So, what you like better, you decide, but I just wanted to make sure you know that there is a way to do to do it this way. So now let's go ahead and uh, try to publish this to the internet, right? So the way to do this, I will leave uh, the link in the description. Uh, go on this website and you can start for free, right? And this platform is, uh, these this host provider specializes in ASP.NET <coughs> uh, hosting. And uh, I've looked for many different ones and this one was really, really good like it was free you can try it out you don't have a, like a commitment or anything if, if basically other websites will ask you to get uh, you know like a subscription before you try it. so and then they'll tell you yeah, yeah, yeah we can host .NET core and uh, then you get there and you set it all up and then you spend like 10 hours setting it up and then you contact support and then you get put through second line and then they tell you we don't do dot net core and you're there like give me my damn money back anyway enough of that sign up and uh, i'll log in and i'll show you what I'll show you what happens so in here you'll go to your control panel and you'll just add a new site call your site whatever let's call it blog and programming language, select ASP.NET, and the rest not, doesn't matter because .NET Core doesn't rely on any ASP.NET uh, functionality. <laughs> All right, and while we do that, you want to download software called FileZilla, and this is FTP software, and this this will be your fallback in case in case something bad happens and you don't get to use web deploy or Azure, like this is a good software in case you need to do like file transfers get it and i'll show you how to use both web deploy and ftp so once you get your blog you have your information here for show ftp information you have your show web deploy information you can enable it disable it you can configure your um, uh, IIS sort of uh, IIS stuff, 
So first thing th first is we're going to use um, FileZilla. So open it up and you'll make up a new connection. So you put in your host, you put in your username, and then you put in your password. Simple enough. Connect. All right. So what we want to do here is let's just uh, open this up and let's .NET publish configuration release. Okay. So this C specifies the configuration. So what's the difference between configuration and a specifying configuration? Well, if you're not going to specify, you're going to go into debug. And if we go into our solution here and we press show all files, you will see this bin and object folder. And if we go into bin and object, you will see these two folders. And these uh, debug and release folders are basically your configuration. So debug stores all the files during your when you're debugging when you're debugging so every time you run this in the debugger or just executing it you can select this configuration here and basically release code is much faster than debug code because it just uh, takes extra step to extra steps with the code in the compiler and to like get ready for the virtual machine that is going to run on so go ahead run .NET publish with configuration release Oh, right. <laughs> okay, so it published it. Open FileZilla. And now just go ahead and define your um, find wherever your website is located. Go into the project, bin, release, and publish folder. And here's your web app. Is the same thing that you have when you publish it to the IIS folder. And uh, the reason I'm showing you how to use this uh, software instead of uh, using the built in Visual Studio, well, sometimes Visual Studio fails. I know it's built by Microsoft, big company, whatever. It will fail, and you will spend at least two weeks. A month scouring for uh, you know fixes updates you're gonna restart your computer unbelievable amount of times and still won't work so learn how to use uh, third-party tools grab all of this stuff and bosh drag it over so there's a lot of files Especially Trombowigi, I think that's the one that sort of that will have the most, and these uh, images as well. So just let that transfer over. So this is done, and now you take a good think and remember what happened last time. You're gonna know that our database didn't work, and we didn't set up a database yet. So let's just go ahead and see what we get. So I copied this website here, so and this is how you get it before you assign a DNS name. So because it's free for you, uh, you won't be able to assign a DNS name like www.bazinga.com, you know, you won't be able to point that to your website. So, but osh, we get an exception that we, you know, that we encountered before and we know how to fix it. So we are not connected to a database. And good thing is, this comes with a database. So you can go ahead and add your database. Make sure you make an MSSQL database. So, okay, so you can drop this one down and just go ahead and copy this uh, connection string. And let's go into our app settings. And, uh, this here and let's make smart ASP copy this name here Bosch comment this out so just make sure you put your password there I'm gonna omit mine 
Okay, so once you set up the connection string, you can go ahead and uh, update your database with the migrations that you have created. Da -da 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 -da. By the way, guys, if you uh, run into any problems while this is happening, uh, any uh, errors like these, <laughs> leave them in the comment. Leave them in the comment section. I will help you sort them out. I had incorrect usernames, so yeah, that was my mistake. Make sure you use the um, this connection string template. Okay, so that's done. Uh, let's take this website here and let's go into our Microsoft uh, uh, Management Studio. Now, guys, I know this might seem tedious, like you're doing. Why are we, why are we doing all these extra steps? Well, guess what? You will be in a situation when you won't be able to, you won't know what to do. And then you're going to have to like explore all this stuff. But you can now see how the, how you can sort of, which steps you need to take to so, solve issues. Instead of sort of rediscovering them yourselves. So go ahead. Um, <clears throat> and uh, log in using the credentials. Bodosh. And go and expand databases, and there we have it. Cool. Posts. And cool. So our tables are created. Nice. Next thing, let's update our, uh, what's it called? Uh, let's re update the live environment and uh, start this bad boy up. So let's dot net publish see release but before we do that copy over your main connection string for live from app settings.json to the production one so release cool and now in your ftp publish you don't don't need to drag all of this over. Just make sure you drag these files. Leave the www root folder out of it. Now, if you look at the transfer queue, right? Because the website's running, it's not gonna let you sort of rewrite it because it's active. And usually, active files will prevent you from being overwritten. So, manage. Go to manage website, and you can turn the website off. And you can turn detailed errors on, which is not going to really help us because since we rely on the, our configuration in the startup menu. So yeah, once that's off, go ahead, drag these over again, and make sure nothing's failed in the transfer queue this time. Cool. Turn the website back on again. Now let's refresh. Sweet. So it works. Let's try to see if we got the seed. Yep, we got it. Let's add a new post. Mr. Posty post. Very post. X post post post. Photography. La la ba ba. And I don't know. Let's add something in soon. Cool. And bazoing. So let's see what's happening. Error. Okay. So first of all, when you encounter this, there is going to be a different file system. So go ahead, find your blog, and go into file permissions and change the ASP.NET to read write. So after waiting some time, let's try to update this. Cool. There we go. So <clears throat> next thing, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to handle images again. I know we already handled images, but we're going to handle them some more because guess what? Size of this is 700. 
800 by 400 but the size of the image is if you look closely is like 3000 by 2000 so you upload huge images but you only use a small part of them so we're going to learn how to convert those images in the next episode and again we're going to publish it again but we're going to be using a different method so this is it for this episode uh, thank you guys for watching this can be a very complicated topic when you start off but if you have any questions leave them in the comments i'll answer them all uh, i'll put all the links in the description um, and as always thanks for watching see you in the next episode